Today is September the 15th. Why is the world a better place? Let's find out together as we begin our study of the book of Romans. During these next two weeks, we're going to begin the first of the Pauline letters, the book of Romans. It's the longest book, and uh, it's his most theological. Today, I'd like you to read through chapters 1 through 4. In the book of Romans, after an introduction in which Paul talks about his love for the Roman church, and yet he says, I've never been able to be there. I want to go. I, I plan to visit you. And then, starting in verse 16, he lays out his um, uh, uh, theology, what he believes about the gospel. I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentile. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it's through faith that a righteous person has life. Paul's thesis is essentially that the gospel is God's power um, through which God reveals his righteousness or his justice. It stems from Christ's faithfulness, and it's extended to everyone who would believe. Well, that's wonderful. We see God's righteousness and God's justice. So Paul immediately goes to the question, well, if that's true, why isn't the world a better place? Chapter 1, verse 18, but God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful and wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Instead of righteousness and justice, what we see is wickedness. Why? Because of sin. So Paul starts saying, first of all, God's wrath is revealed against uh, pagans, those who have no righteousness. In chapter 2, Paul goes on and he says, the virtuous Jew is also guilty of sin. And so God reveals his wrath against them as well. At the start of chapter 3, he addresses several questions that he believes the reader might have. First of all, does the Jew have any advantage? He says, yeah, they have God's word. Secondly, so does the unbelief of some Jews nullify the faith of other Jews? And Paul says, no. Uh, Jews are saved individually, not as a nation. Three, does our... Uh, if our injustice shows God's justice, does that make God unjust? Paul says, oh, heavens, no. God is just. We are unjust. And then fourthly, should we continue to do evil so that God can uh, show us his mercy, God can show us his goodness. And Paul says, no, of course not. Evil and good are two different things. He picks up his thesis again uh, in verse uh, 21. He, he explains from 9 to 20 that everyone has sinned. Jew, Gentile, it doesn't matter. Everyone has sinned. So in 3.21, he picks up his thesis again. 
God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law. He specifies now that the law is no longer the means whereby we are uh, judged to be righteous. In chapter 4, well, in, in chapter 3, he says, we are declared just by the redemptive act of Jesus. In chapter 4, he gives a practical example that at least his Jewish readers will be able to identify with. Abraham was declared just before he was circumcised. Now, that could easily escape you. But in Genesis chapter uh, uh, 14, I believe, Abraham is declared to be just. But the circumcision of Abraham comes in chapter 17. So Paul's argument is that Abraham is justified, not by his circumcision, not by being a Jew, but by his faith. And today, anyone who has faith can be a child of Abraham and experience God's righteousness. We started this devotional with the question, why isn't the world a better place? If God has given us salvation, why isn't it a better place? Because of sin. Because as Paul says in great detail here, everyone sins. And sin ruins everything. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll answer the question, what is salvation good for?